Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. I came forth from the Father, and I am come into the world. Again, I leave the world, and I go to the Father. Words taken from the Gospel for the fifth Sunday after Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When praying before His Majesty in the Blessed Sacrament, sometimes like to ask Him things. One thing I ask Him is, what are you doing in there? What are you doing in that tabernacle? And here's one possible answer I think he's given. I am here for God the Father. I am here to satisfy and content my heart in showing love unto the end. As the loving son, I am here to repair damages done to my father. From the time of Adam's fall in paradise, fatherhood has suffered. There is much to be repaired in fatherhood, most especially in regards to man's relationship with God the Father. And St. Peter Julian Amard gives a hint of this in a meditation on the most blessed of sacraments. He says, the Eucharist is in excess, is in excess of what was needed for the work of redemption. It was not required of Jesus Christ by his Father's justice. The Passion and Calvary were sufficient to reconcile us with God and reopen for us the doors of our Father's home. Why then did our Lord institute the Eucharist? He instituted it for himself, to satisfy himself, to content his heart. Understood in this light, the Eucharist is a most divine, tender, and loving thing. Goodness and overflowing tenderness are its character and nature. And here's the key line. Even if it had been useless to us, the Eucharist was a need for our Lord. Thank you, St. Peter Julian. Here we see an important pattern we should take note of. God does things first and foremost for himself and then for us. I think we sometimes get that inverted. We think he does everything for us. Now, God made the cosmos, the universe, first and foremost for his glory as an expression of his love. Then he made it to be a palace for the bride, the church. In that order, as indicated by St. Peter Julian, God the Son's tender heart could do nothing else but this. He wanted to repair the damages done to God the Father in superabundance. My father has been offended. I am going to fix it. That was his first aim, was God. I want to fix it in a measure far beyond what was needed by God's justice for us to be saved. My heart would not let me do anything else. And even seemingly suffer in the sacrament endless abuse a continued passion, as it were, until the end. First and foremost, to fulfill his love for his Father. And second of all, by making all repairs to the fatherhood possible for us, for us men. Now, all fathers need to do the same, both spiritual fathers, priests, and fathers of families, if the repairs to fatherhood, a wound, that haunts mankind are going to be effective. We've been wounded very much at the very beginning, and it needs to be fixed. Fathers need then to put God first, even from the first moment of the day, that heroic moment, every day, from their waking moments, ordering all to him. And the fact we're in a huge crisis of fatherhood shows that this has been greatly neglected. Maybe we can talk more on that later, maybe on Father's Day. But maybe we can just stop right here and say, maybe you're in a marriage, or I'm in a religious community, or I'm in this whatever, this parish, and you're tempted to look outside. You need to say, wait a minute, what are you here for? What am I here for? 
The same reason his majesty stays in the tabernacle is the same reason we need to stay the course. For the love of God to make reparation. He's been damaged. He's, our relation has been hurt. I am going to fix it by staying put. Now, today, Mother's Day. Mothers probably thought I wasn't going to get around to them talking about fathers. Father, get the right day is the second Sunday of May. <laughs> now, Mother's Day, let's shift our focus now to motherhood. And it's a wound that needs repairing too. Due to the fall of our first mother, Eve. As every good Catholic knows, this repair was done most perfectly and completely in, in superabundance even by Our Lady. Just as priests and fathers are supposed to carry on the work of the new Adam, so too mothers and women religious, nay all women, need to fulfill this work of the new Eve. But they are up against quite a lava flow in our time due to the spreading of communistic errors, one might argue, which have only opened the fatherhood and motherhood wound all the more. Let's turn to Pope Pius XI. He describes some of these things pretty well in his encyclical against communism. Refusing to human life, any sacred or spiritual character, communist doctrine logically makes of marriage and the family a purely artificial and civil institution. The outcome of a specific economic system. There exists no matrimonial bond or of a juridical moral nature that is not subject to the whim of the individual or of the collectivity. Naturally, therefore, the notion of an indissoluble marriage tie is scouted. Communism is particularly characterized by the rejection of any link that binds woman to the family and the home and her emancipation is proclaimed as a basic principle. She is withdrawn from the family and the care of her children to be thrust instead into public life and collective production under the same conditions as man. The care of home and children then devolves upon the collectivity. Finally, the right of education is denied to parents for it is conceived as the exclusive prerogative of the community in whose name and by whose mandate alone parents may exercise this right. Pope Pius, thank you. In order to understand how best to counter this communistic lava flow that's everywhere now, it seems, and heal, heal and repair motherhood, typology, typology comes to our assistance. I am known as Father Typology sometimes. You should expect that I would turn to it. So Moses acts as a type of how fatherhood can be repaired, but even he, the meekest of men, failed at times. And it seems to me that the Ark of Covenant that was revealed to him on the mountain is a beautiful type. It puts on display how motherhood is repaired. I have eight points today of consideration. These are certainly not exhaustive, but let's go through eight points of contact with this type. Number one, verticality, verticality. The purpose of the ark was revealed by heaven to Moses. It came from above, not from man or from society or collectivity as the communists call it. Motherhood is not a civil or human institution, in other words. But it's from God. It is a state in life revealed and blessed by God from the very beginning. If it is properly embraced, it will save us. Think of the fourth commandment. Thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother. And the Bible mentions that in a number of different ways. How important is motherhood? It's from heaven. It's from above. It's vertical. Number two place very important the ark had its home in the heart of the temple of old but also in the heart of the new temple above not made by human hands as saint john saw in the apocalypse chapter 11 and that ark of course was our lady it was not brought out for display except for serious reasons eve seemed uneasy to be in the heart of paradise 
and seemed to be looking for a way out, a way to be his God, even though she was in paradise. Thus the devil opened a door for her, and it led out but to pain and suffering and loss of grace. The place of a mother is the home, the little domestic sanctuary of God that is the foundation of society. Mothers, be satisfied with your home life and make it your paradise. Pray even to love this place. The doors to heaven will more easily open for you and your family. The power of the ark in its proper place is attested to by many passages of the sacred scripture. It is where Moses retired in distress and God would come down to help him. Powerful graces are available to those who know their place and humbly take their place. And thus, tendencies to escape need to be mortified and realize just what they are, temptations. Know your place, mothers. Take it and God will grace you greatly. Modesty, number three. Eve lost her garment of grace and had to be clothed anew. And thus the ark counters this by being placed behind veils and wrapped in three layers whenever looked upon and brought out into the open. Only one man could look upon the ark without those coverings, the high priest once a year. The application seems clear, one man for one woman. Ladies, please take modestly seriously, saving yourself for that one man. Please dress as prescribed in the bulletin and do not think you're an exception. Everybody always seems to think they're an exception to the rule, or maybe they know better than the priests. No, there's much grace available here and conversion of souls are possible. Let's please obey and dress modestly. We're asking it of you. It's important. It's part of healing the wound. Number four, self-effacement. We know about mothers through their children. This is how good mothers make up for the wound of Eve. They raise up saints to obey the law and to enter into paradise, taking as many souls with them as possible. When people see a good child or a saintly soul, this thought inevitably springs to mind. You must have had a good mother. You must have had a good mother. Notice also with the ark how the focus is not so much on the ark itself, but rather its contents, the law, the miracle working rod and the manna that was inside. The ark is, so to speak, self-effacing. This is represented by the cherubim, the two angels on the top facing down with their wings covering the cherubim. They're focusing on the contents of the ark, self-effacement. Number five, chastity. The ark is covered in gold on the inside and out. The mother is pure of heart and body, seeking to serve God and her husband according to the law of God. She promotes purity in her family and children and seeks to eliminate all that might harm them, obeying King David in the Psalms where he says, guard innocence, guard innocence. In our times, mothers insist on limiting internet and media usage previewing as much as possible anything that might be harmful to her children or even her husband. Remember how the ark is under the angel's wings to protect her. If she stays in that place, they will help her. Mothers will be granted grace in as much as they fulfill their duties given by God for the home and the undoing of Eve's rebellion. Angels will be there. I don't know about you when I was growing up, Mom seemed to appear out of nowhere at times. And I sometimes realize that in hindsight, it was that she had extra angelic help. In this way, mothers heal the wound by becoming powerful protectors. Comforter number six, when troubled, when troubled, Moses went to the ark and he found comfort. He found counsel and strength throughout history. 
many powerful men have confided in their wives to their betterment. Think about it. The family is a little city-state. And this is one of the reasons why, we've said it before, the government, the communistic governments, hate family life. Because you're an independent city-state within their collectivity. And they want control. And so when you divorce, they get in there. The government gets into your life. They control your bank account and everything else. That's why we should hate divorce. It's bad. But if you have a city-state, you have a king and you got a queen. Not a master and a servant. And the king ought to consult the queen. He makes the final decision. But he ought to let her know or talk about it. That's how it ought to be. Take counsel and your plans will never go wrong. Sometimes they're wrong. It's true. They don't, wives, queens don't always have the answer. But you know what? They have a heart. And they will pray. Good mothers are not only a refuge for their husbands. They're also able to be a refuge for their children. From the life of St. Therese, a spiritual mother, she was assistant to novices, mistress. A certain sister was inclined to be depressed. One evening, Therese noticed that she was particularly sad. And unable to speak to her because of the night silence, she was obeying the rule. She went out of her way to give her a most friendly smile. One which the sister never forgot. Remembering the moments years later, she remarked, Oh, that smile of Sister Therese. It just seemed to take all my troubles away. Good mothers are always seeking to provide comforting and good and holy memories. What a great thing that is. Number seven, she's a teacher. The ark is contained inside the symbols of power of the Old Testament, the manna, prayer, the Eucharist. The rod records to authority and love of the cross. The tablets, a working knowledge of the law, the catechism. Children often approach their mother first about questionable things that rise up in their hearts. And mothers need to be accessible for this purpose. And have recourse to proper authority when required themselves. I remember my mother, the simple answer she gave me saved me on more than one occasion. When I had heard something strange at school or from some media source. No fancy explanations were needed. Oh, just a simple statement of our faith. And it worked. And finally, number eight, revealer of faults. Children who honor and love their mothers will indeed discover their faults. As a spiritual mother, St. Therese had a highly developed capacity to deal with different persons in different ways, to accommodate herself to each one. It's one of the talents of a mother. It was one of the reasons she was chosen to train the younger sisters. She used to say that souls are as different as faces. Children are the same. And she dealt with each novice according to her needs. She was kind with those who needed kindness, but firm and unbending with those who cut corners on Carmelite discipline or tried to manipulate her. One young sister used to avoid the regular session she was supposed to have with Therese. Knowing how probing it would be, she always revealed her faults. Without ever seeming to hunt her down, Therese always managed to be somewhere least expected in her path. The sister later spoke of the tact with which Therese made sure that those encounters took place and were effective. That's just a little, little glimpse at what mothers are able to do. Mothers often receive graces to perceive the faults of their children more readily and most readily. And she is there to help the child overcome them. Children, listen to your moms. Seems to me all this is captured well in the apparitions of Our Lady of Lourdes, with the Immaculate Mother taking up her place in the niche, her ark. She's the ark and she's in her place. 
Maybe we could piously ask her, what are you doing in there? And the answer would be that she has come to reveal the faults of all who come up against her. And she did. She revealed them all. Anybody that came up against Our Lady found themselves with their faults revealed. Many converted. She provided for their correction. She taught them the Pope possessed the gift of infallibility. She looked over the crowd, comforted them, healed them, and answered their pleas, softening the Father's heart toward them. She dressed modestly and beautifully and was always self-effacing. Dear mothers, know your place and take up your place to double for the Ark of the Covenant, to raise up saints to help the church in this time of need and repair anew the wound of woman caused by Eve. You may not be known so much in this world, but many will say of your children, you must have had a good mother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.